Hi guys. Um, excuse the beard. I was only camera ready here, but I'm I'm doing a job. I thought it'd be quite handy to show you. It's a kitchen. I'm rewiring a kitchen, and the thing with kitchens is you don't really get a first fix, second fix scenario of a kitchen. It almost goes over three or four different stages. I'm at stage one. I'm going to be running wires up. I'm going to be putting sockets in the walls, but I'll also be laying cables ready for when the units go in. When the units go in, there'll almost be a stage two where I'll bring wires into the units. And then obviously when the decorator's been and gone, stage three, what would have been a second fix will be like a third fix. You'll, you'll screw everything back, you'll get everything live, everything will be done, the cookers will be in, extract the hoods will be up, dishwashers, washing machines, everything will be sorted. So with a kitchen, it is slightly different. So what I'll do is I thought I'd just show you this video. This is stage one. This is me putting the wires. I'm just going to flip the, cable, the camera around now so you can have a little look at what's going on. Okay, so starting from left to right, I've made a start. I'm quite fortunate. This is this is all dot and dab. That's all dot and dab all the way around there. So what I've done is I've made a start. I've measured up and I've started chopping my boxes and using a multi-tool just to go through the first layer of plasterboard. Um, a little bit of dot every now and again where I've had a bit of plaster about the breakout, but you know it's it's not been too bad. Like the, the they've all come out quite well. But I'll talk you through it. Here in the in the, here in the corner, I've got eye level unit. We're going to have a double oven and a cupboard above. In, in the cupboard above I'm going to put a couple of um, isolators. Guys, there's a grey area of isolators and I'll be honest, I'm not 100% about this because I hear this from, I hear different stories from different people, I can't find anything online. Are we okay putting isolators in cupboards? Or do they always have to be visible? So if you can answer that comments box, okay? Much appreciated. Um, end of the unit is there. Then we've got 500 and a hob. Now you should know this, but regulation states hob, no sockets within 300. That mate is back exactly 300. I've allowed just enough for the lip of the socket. That's 300. That's 500 there. I've got 200 gap, two single boxes, single socket outlet in case you want to whack a blender or a uh, slow cooker in on their little 500 worktop. Light switch for the under unit lights. Hob, extractor hood. That's gas, only needs an ignition, that just needs an isolator, bomb. That's what's going in there. Follow it around, kitchen sink, draining board, no sockets over there. Will be a washing machine. I'm going to whack a socket underneath the uh, old kitchen sink so we can plug the washing machine in. Oh no, tell lights, dishwasher, ignore that. Alright, two sockets visible. I'm going to come down, I'm going to pump out, I'm going to put an outdoor socket. Uh, work my way along. Another two sockets. There's going to be a breakfast bar coming straight out here. So you can set up, probably put some USB sockets in there so you can charge your phone. I've made this in line with that. So it looks nice and uniform when the sockets go on. And what I'm going to do as well is underneath this unit, this, this is old, this is just what they're using as a temporary kitchen. Underneath here, I'm going to run some twin and earth, ring main, probably a wago box with some wagos in. I'm going to leave it curled up because uh, just through past events people tend to chuck things like wine fridges in or sockets right at the very end of the unit so if that ever happens I've got a cable under there ready to go and basically that's going to be my kitchen done so what I'm going to do is I'm going to crack on and do this because I am going to apologise this is still a phone I need to pull my finger out and get a GoPro and so I'm, I'm limited for space so I might do a few little minor videos of me putting bits and pieces in but one thing I am going to do is a video of when this is finished. Alright, no worries guys, I'll catch you in a minute. Another little thing I want to mention when you're doing a kitchen, you can normally get away in a living room or a bedroom, you know, anywhere else in a house, you can normally get away with just using a level measuring off the floor. In a kitchen, get a laser level. I mean I've got a cheap and cheerful standing one there, it's not, it's not pucker but it's alright for a little kitchen. Use a, use a laser. Because they're going to level the floor, they're going to put the worktops in, it's all going to be kosher, everything's going to be level, they might have some splashbacks, they might have some tiles. You'll know if you're out, even if it's by 10 mil from one side of the kitchen to the other. If they're running tiles across, and you're flush at the bottom of one tile over there, but they've got to start cutting the tiles to pieces over there, you're going to know your sockets are out, it's going to be fairly obvious that you fucked up. So, 
Use use a level. Use a, use a laser level. Make them spot on because you can't get you can't have problems in a kitchen. And so I have I've I've run a laser way around that. So that should that should work out nice and tidy. Uh, I think that's it. All right, chaps. Got a box here. Stick it in the wall. I can't get a fix in in anything but the middle one because of where the brick is. You've got to get at least two fixings. You can't just put a socket on the wall with one. So a little tip. I've whacked out one of these knockouts. And what you can do, if you don't drop everything all over the floor, is you can still get a fixing in those. And to be honest, I actually kind of prefer it. I've just dropped my penny wash on the floor. Get up. It's not as easy as it looks, trying to do it with one hand. You can actually fix that back. Bloody hell. Do you want to bury me? Right, there we go. Alright, so under there, we've got a bit of flexi conduit, so it's all a bit wibbly wobbly under there. That's going to go underneath the new unit. Might be a socket at the end, might be a wine cooler, who knows, or it might just be curled up and never be used. But he's there. He goes outside. There's an outdoor socket. I'll show you that in a minute. Up the wall, in zone. A couple of sockets there. Probably be a couple of USB ones. I managed to get them in quite nice and flush. So that's pretty puck old. I fuck the wall. I might put a bit of filler on that so it's dry when I come back. I'll sand it down and put a socket on. But uh, down the wall. Continues along. I'm going to have to try and support this off the wall temporary because they're going to level the floor. They're going to screed it, so I'm going to have to try and get this off because I don't want them to get it stuck in the screed. A uh, bit of excess there, it's going to go in the back of a cupboard, do a dishwasher. I need to whack some clips or saddles in that. It goes up to these bad boys up there. Uh, sink. Continues around. Gets a bit messy around here. See that junction box there? That was, well it is, the shed. That's like a temporary supply for the shed. I say it's a temporary, it's probably a permanent supply, so it's going to be neatened up a little bit and put in some poly pipe. But that does the shed. Um, there you go, that's going to be your hob ignition. Follow it up, that's your extractor hood. Two undercovered lights, light switch, single socket outlet, and a rat's nest of wire, which will eventually be going up this wall. But I'll be honest, I'm going to probably leave that underneath the kickboards for now and wait for the um, wait for the high level unit to go in because anyone that's done it before will know that ovens, they can be quite deep. They might go all the way back to the wall. I need to see how deep they are. I need to, I need to see how I can get those cables from there to there past the oven. Probably stick it in a bit of trunking if I can. If not, I'll have to do dubious amounts of uh, flexi conduit up the wall or worst case scenario, I'll have to... Um, I'd have to take a whole section of that plasterboard out. But there's always a way, so I'll probably wait for the old oven to go in. Alright guys, that's me done for the day. It's uh, it's like 5 o'clock, and it's Friday, and it's beautiful, and I've got my daughter to pick up, so I need to get home, get an ice cream, get my daughter, get out of it. But just as a little reference of what I've done, I've got the boxes in, I've got a load of flexi conduit in, we've got... Oh, socket, socket, extractor hood over here. That's going to be a uh, double oven big unit. All the wires are going to go up. It's all in flexi conduit, as you can see. We've got a dishwasher down there. And um, as far as I'm concerned, that's kind of the first fix done. I'm going to be back here Monday. I'm going to start second fixing a lot of these sockets. I'm going to see if I can get this on. I'll have to put some Wago boxes down. Just see what I can do. Just so I can get the kitchen ring alive. Alright, no worries. I might see you Monday. Good morning, everyone. Monday, and I'm back at this small kitchen rewire. There's been a bit of an issue. It, it happens in kitchens. I do try and avoid them. I try to make sure the customer is 100% happy with where things are going. It, it doesn't end up like that. There's always going to be one thing that gets moved, and it's that socket over there. 
what they've decided is the breakfast bar is too close to the dining room. So we're going to remove a 600 unit and I've got to shift them over. I've, I've actually got a laser on the wall, I don't know if you can see it there. The centre of that laser is going to be in the middle of those two new sockets. So I'm going to have to crack a few eggs now and try and get this over. It's, it's going to be a bit of damage, but it can't be avoided. So um, I'll catch you guys in a minute once I've done it. Alright, so what I'm going to do here is I've released the screws at the back of them. The customer's filled around the socket, so it's quite tight now. So I'm going to whiz around that with my multi-tool. What I've got here is I've got a very old wood bit in there. Can you see that? Rather than chuck them in the bin, I like to use them for a bit of plasterboard. Works a dream. I mean, if you look at a pad saw, it's got a, a wood blade on it anyway. So um, I'm going to crack them with that with my noisy wasp. And uh, I'll talk to you in a few minutes once I've done it. I do like the Moe tool. I'll be honest with you, I've had it for about like, two years now. And I've, I've already forgotten how I used to do jobs without it. Like, if, if I didn't have a Moe tool now and I wanted to do this, I don't know, I'd probably try and whiz around it with a standing knife or a pad saw. Pad saw would literally make a right arse of this. It, I'd lose so much plaster on the outside and a standing knife. That's, that's neither easy or the safest method of trying to cut around a box. But beautiful. If you ain't got a multi tool, get a multi tool. Literally, it just does everything. It's what's called multi tool. It's absolutely fucked up. Alright, let's try and do the next one. Okay, use the laser, I've uh, marked this all on the wall, I'm going to cut it out and have a multi-tool and um, once I'm going down I'm just going to cut out the multi-tool so what I'll do is I'll fast forward this and you can watch me cut it out uh, they sound alright, I don't think I'm have any dot behind them dot is basically, this is dot and dab wall, this is a plausible sheet they whack bits of plaster on the back and they stick on the brickwork every now and again you get to a section where they'll actually have a bit of plaster that you hit. It can be a bit of a pain in the ass to get around, but it sounds like it's going to be alright. So, what I'll do is I'll do a fast forward of this and you can watch me cut it out. There is a little bit of dot just there, so I was quite lucky, didn't hit that. I think we'll be alright over there. So let me show you what the dot is. Can you see in here, just there, this bit of plaster? And that's what I've used to keep this sheet on the wall. So let me cut out this last one. And then, uh, do you know, oh my god, that's not as deep as that. How deep is that? 30. 30. Alright, so I'm going to have to do on this, I'm going to have to uh, get my chasing drill out. I'm going to have to chop that in a little bit. I've got a 35mm box in that. I used some 47mm boxes in that. I like the box to be flush to the front. It's a lot better. So um, I'll, have to, I'll have to take 5mm off of that so it fits in nice and flush. First things first, I'm going to chop this other box out.
taking off some of the fresh paint there. Well, I'll be honest with you, this has come out a lot nicer than them ones, and I wonder if it's because they've painted. It might have made the um, the plaster slightly damp, made it a little bit more malleable, not so brittle. And it's kind of kept it all together a little bit. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get a rod. I'm going to see if I can get a root all the way down to the bottom. Now, it has to be in zone still, because this is not deeper than 50 mil in the wall. And it's not protected by any sort of uh, earth metal containment, so it's going to have to be in zone. I'll have a little thing to talk about in a minute because I've got the outside socket and I haven't measured it yet but I don't know if that falls in zone with the light switch. Hopefully it does. If it doesn't, I don't know, maybe I'll have to try and redraw the hole out a bit of an angle so it meets up that light switch. Oh, well, anyway, that's another problem for another time. So let's see if I've got a route down to the bottom. That should be long enough. Right. Wish me luck. Straight down the side of that little dab. Oh, look at that, all the way down. All the way down there. Beautiful. Next problem is though, I've only got a gap there from a poor, oh, so it's about 16 mil that gap. How big is that? 16 mil. And I don't know if that's going to line up with my knockout. Although. I reckon if I take a bit more of that plaster at the back of that wall, it should be alright. So I'm going to do that. I don't know if you noticed, but I, I've got this this old chisel here. And I've, I've got a few really random tools. And it's, they're so random, they've actually got names as well. Like I've got a screwdriver, which has missed most of the installation. The end's all rounded off. It's called the Bashy Driver. And I've, I've been taught that ever since I was an apprentice. It's like these make your own tools that you have. And I'll be honest, I'd be lost without them. I mean, that's that's fantastic. You've got to have you've got to have good ch chisels, but you've got to have a shit chisel because a, sh a chit chisel, shit chit chit do there, do there, you can do that. Because what you normally find is you try and put the box in, it doesn't fit in, and you're like, oh, what's going on? I haven't gone deep enough. But it ain't. It's because the corners you've missed the corners out, or there's some stupid little bit of like a rock or a stone or something in the way. So you need you just need to scrape it flat. And it'll get that socket in nice and flat as well. So you don't have like one corner sticking out more than the others. That, sh that should go in well nice. I'm not going to put it in right now though. Because if I stick it in right now, I think I'll struggle to get it back out. And I probably will start breaking the corners out of this. So I'm going to chisel that a little bit out there. For my socket. Which is, where is he? Right there. If I can lose that in the wall. Smaller chasing bit. I see why she left it not coming handy as well. So I'm going to start off with a, a small chisel. Right. That's taking me in a little bit. And now what I'm going to do is it might do jack shit, but I'm gonna try that one, see if I'm getting down a little bit. That, sir, is bloody beautiful. Try the rod again. This place a bit of rubble's gonna be roof, and it hasn't. And so that being the case, what I'm gonna do now, do I want that out? Actually no, do I want that out? Or do I want that out? I want that out. And I want you out. Do you know actually? Let me give that a big whack. There. Give it a minute. I'm going to have to chase this one out and I want to be able to pull a cable through from one socket to the other. So let's try this again. I 
I'm happy with that. Perfect. I got that standing off and I cut that is because the uh, it wouldn't allow grommet to go in there otherwise and it would probably fall out you, you could probably get in but it just fall out when you pull the wire through so as you can see it goes in now with no problem beautiful I'm you know I'm not gonna show you this one because I'll be probably bored as fuck anyway so I'm gonna I'll chase the rest out I'll get the wire fished up to this and then I'll crack on with the video again all right, that's all in. I'm going to fish down now. I've got my rod. I've caught a hole down there. I'll show you in a minute. Not much of a bending space. I ain't going to, to pull a rod out. So in your pack of rods, you normally get this little flexi bit. There's a reason for it, and it's for things like that. You chuck him on. It should go down, he says. There we go. And does he emerge? He bloody well does. Now, that's him there. Now I can bend that out. I can attach some wires to that and pull him up. However, I wouldn't have been able to do that to that bit, not without probably snapping it. switch now that is uh, 27 centimeters off the corner of that wall and if you come down my entry hole here is 50 mil past that which is so annoying if it was loads and you know for some strange reason it wouldn't be as bad but because it's so close it's quite annoying and anyway, what I'm gonna do is I was gonna try and drill another hole at a slight angle but what I might actually do is I might just chisel this bit out if I can take the corner of that brick off, I should be alright because to be honest, it's basically it's ever so slightly deeper than 50mm anyway. I've got a crack over here and there. It's just over 50mm, can you see that? What's it saying? About 55, nearly 60. So if I can just go slightly deeper, I should get away with that. What I've got here is the outside socket which I've installed off the kitchen ring. I've put some silicon in the back and I've used some penny washers to spread the load on the screws. Um, as you can imagine as I push this back that silicon's going to probably move around so you can only do the best you can possibly do. Down here, you see that little hole? It's probably about 4mm that is. That's a drain hole. The thing with an IP enclosure is it's very good at keeping the water out but when it does get in it can't escape. So if you put a little drain hole down there it will let any water that does get in here, God forbid there is any, it will let it out at the bottom of this box. Done.
I know these are going to be one of the two furthest points because of the way the ring was run. Now, this isn't saying it's going to go on a test certificate, this is just for my peace of mind. When the kitchen's finished and all the few spurs are in, then I'll put this on a test certificate, but... I know the decorator, decorator ain't going to kill themselves. Alright, let's pucker. I'm happy with that. Let's get out of here.